Quite 10, this press briefing of the Liberty Party on the current state of our nation in response to the President's State of the Nation address. I would like to begin with our condolences to fellow Liberians who lost their lives and those loved ones during the horrific tragedy that took the life of about 30 individuals in Nuku Town during the church crusade. In this regard, let us have a moment of silence to the memory of our founding father, Councillor Charles Walker Bronski, our men and partisans who have lost their lives during our political journey, and those of our compatriots who were involved in the Nuku Town incident. May the Almighty God give the bereaved family and the surviving victim the strength and comfort during this time of their grief. Let us have a minute of silence. Thank you so much. We join librarian the war over to say Namaya, fellow librarian. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you may be aware, the impact of political parties on the political system in any country goes far beyond the central function of occupying political office and weighing government power. Political parties are a major information input channel, allowing citizens' needs and wishes to be heard by government and enabling society to set collective goals and ensuring that those goals are met in this connection. Political parties contribute to democratic <coughs> consolidation through representation, making government accountable, and organizing reasonable opposition to government. On yesterday, 24th January 2022, the President of Liberia, His Excellency Josh Weir, delivered his annual State of the Nation address before the Honorable House of the Liberian Legislature as has become customary in our political discourse, the Liberty Party is honored to respond to the under message of the president. Fellow Liberians, it has been four years since President We are took office, promising to generate access to health care, create jobs, stop the culture of corruption, restore the independence of the judicial system, provide for the overall safety of the citizenry and improve the lives of Liberian. Four years later, President Weir and his administration have significantly failed to deliver on his promises. Thus disappointing Liberians, including well-meaning and patriotic Liberians who voted for him. Today, many who once had hope in Liberian best soccer player regret putting confidence in him as president. His grandiose plan for Ballet Island did not even make a debut on the paper. The coastal highway remained an abstract touch. The promise of 6,000 teachers from Nigeria is now wishful thinking. The Lone Star Airways, supposedly for the good of the country, but replayed with an ego to show of a plan for the president personal news while the very people who voted for him are relegated to extreme poverty. Hmm. The last four years have been devastating to our people. Our town are now harder for the average librarian than when the president took office. Food is unaffordable for the average librarian. Adequate health care is a quick dream. Crime against women are rampant and with all proper judicial recourse. Systemic corruption still persists, government spending yet unrestrained, and the quality of life in downward spiral as inflation drives more and more librarians below the poverty line. In these challenging times, when the true leader should rise to the occasion with solution, the president responds to our national crisis as then as confusing to librarian as the metro he ran on change for hope. Hmm. In all of this, the president and his cronies are perpetually in the state of denial as to the bruising condition the ordinary man faces. They should have 
they, 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 the wife all believe that this president is the best since 1847 in terms of his input. The president is trying his best. He has good heart for the country. All the ball of the country. They will say, the fact remains, however, that the measure of national progress cannot be stated in terms of an individual best. As a nation that is far behind others, we must set realistic goals and aim for the realization of such goals, making honest and deliberate effort. This is certainly not the case. In all fairness, the 2022 State of the Nation address by the President is remnants of the past that has been perpetuated with elaborate promises. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, during the season of our 174 independence, when our nation sought leadership to move forward, our president was busy releasing music, music commemorating Rita Mali, the wife of the late Bob Mali. Also during the 2021 Christmas holiday, when many librarians could not afford rest in all of busy needs, let alone celebrate the joyous occasion and season, our president was again releasing Christmas music, where he bestowed adoration on himself and told LeBron his Christmas was on them. My Christmas on you, this is this a LeBron way of letting someone know you are expecting something from them during the holiday. How can the president expect anything from us Liberians when his administration has ensured LeBron have nothing for their own business needs, let alone something to get another question. Why would the president who openly display his material possession that the average librarian can only dream of be requesting something from the very people he has helped to impoverish? Not only was the president busy making music at Librarian 100 during the holiday, he was also busy burnishing his brand new customized vehicle from the United States of America before the very poor who had so little to eat. How could our president mock so many librarians? who live below the poverty line. The president spoke of his vision for change for hope. Not only were librarians confused as to the meaning of the matter, the president has since failed to explain to librarians what that means and how it translates into national development. And that partly explains why the president has performed so poorly. A national vision is not simply a document of important ideas or a dream of a better tomorrow or a strategy to achieve the dream. A national vision embraces goals, objectives that are pursued in the interests of the people and not the interests of the few, as it is with the case. It is not a vision when the action or lack of action of the government makes the few richer and the majority poorer. It is not a vision when the government pursues the same policy that brought Labrador to its knees. Not only was the president busy making music at Labrador 100 during the holiday, he was also busy burnishing his new customer vehicle from the United States before the very people who had little to eat. How could our president mock so many librarians who live below the poverty line? We are convinced that the vast majority of librarians are ready and prepared to break the shackles of the last four years that continue to subject our national interest to insoluble greed selling of our children's future for a few dollars today and increasing the debt burden that future generation will pay for. When this president took office in January, 20, in January 2018, LeBron's total debt burden was approximately 87.4 million. At the time, we were paying 30 million each year in interest to serve that debt. It was bad for an underdeveloped country such as ours to have had such debt with little to show for it. But by May 2020, President Weir had taken the total debt burden from 1.5 billion with payment of 48, 49 million annually in interest. In interest payment. We are paying lender an extra $19 million each year because of the extra debt from this government. Imagine what 19 million could do for our agriculture, for our education, for our health care, for our youth, for our women development, for the so physically challenged children in the street. 
each year. And the average in the study day in the in the study day of this is that Mr. Mr. Weir has little to show for the excessive borrowing. By the time he leaves office, I'm afraid he is expected to double both liberal total debt and the annual payment to service that debt. My fellow liberal, this is totally unacceptable. Economic revitalization. Mr. President, the liberal economy needs bold policy and prudent implementation. If we are to move forward in the 20th and 21st century global economy, our resilience, our reliance on natural resources export alone is a failed strategy and seems to be the only playbook this administration is using. What works in this strategy is failure of the government to curtail runaway expenditure as at a time when there are downward pressure on traditional expo on the global market. To revitalize our economy, we need to create opportunities that build the skill set of a middle class. We have to train a future workforce so they are prepared for the job we can create in our country. We must feed the entrepreneurial spirit of our people so their creativity can spur economic growth. To do so, our government must rethink how it appropriates the budget. We must reduce unnecessary spending and redirect saving to workforce development. We must invest in our women and our youth. We wake up to the bulk of our population. In one of our previous economic policy briefs, the Liberty Party stated that there is inadequate support for agriculture from government in the form of extension program exacerbated by the lending environment that makes it impossible for farmers to secure funding for that sector of the economy. As a result, agribusinesses far from realizing its potential. In fact, the sector is obstructed in its growth by the lack of available support. Governance. Unfortunately, the shortcomings of the We administration have not been limited to poor economic performance, but also extend to poor governance and the rule of law. After four years in office, this administration still has not shown a clear predisposition to meaningful, govern to, to meaningful governance reform. While we would like to recognize initial reforms started in local government sector, for example, government pilot project in Magibi County, which is geared towards revenue retention at the local level. Local government reform must be seen to be holistic. With the passage of the Decentralization Act, it was expected that the government would make periodic progress report to the legislature through the Ministry of Internal Affairs. This has not been the case. Corruption. While pretending to be battling corruption, Mr. President, you failed to report to the people of Liberia on any specifics relating to your fight against corruption. What has become of the 20 million corruption scandal? The water and sewer case involving its managing director and other unresolved and unprosecuted corruption cases. Mr. President, you should have realized that by now that an effective battle against corruption must begin from the top. Or else, punishing junior employees of government while the big shots are allowed to walk away only serve to embolden corrupt government officials. Remember the liberal adage, the fish start getting rotten from here. Yeah. Given the overwhelming evidence in support of, present, the, of the present lack of resolve to fight corruption, especially when his friends are involved, it is difficult not to conclude that the president's fight against corruption are a gimmick designed to impress members of the international community. Period. Rule of law. The rule of law is the foundation for both our liberty and for other. In any functioning democracy, it is adherence to the rule of law that guarantees equal treatment of all citizens and foreigners alike residing therein. The rule of law allows us to organize our lives, plan our future, and resolve disputes in a rational and equitable way. Mr. President, do you need to be told what is obtaining at the Ministry of Justice, especially with the Solicitor General? There are dossiers of cases that involve the credibility of that ministry that should warrant your immediate intervention.
to justify your sins on the rule of law. But as it is, you are either unconcerned or are acquiesced to it. Many of the brain historical struggle have had their root in the utter disrespect for the rule of law by those to whom state power has been entrusted. And although many of those currently serving in your government, Mr. President, and your political institution in particular, have been vocal critic in the immediate past government on this issue, the country seems to be, the country seems no closer to party with this problem. In realization of this, several benchmarks were set jointly by the international community and the sitting government at the time, all in anticipation of the withdrawal of the United Nations from Liberia. On that arrangement, as continued in the plan of the Army Drawdown, known and star as Army Drawdown Plan, there were benchmarks to the effect that by the time Army would have withdrawn from Liberia, the total manpower strength of the Liberian National Army would be at 8,000 men. The armed forces would be about 5,000 men. The immigration would be about 4,000. As the record reflects, those benchmarks have not been met. In addition thereto, there have been a dramatic reduction in the manpower strength of all the support measures security institution and architecture, owing to the attrition in general, which mostly result from dissatisfaction of the officer, coupled with several government decisions to retire officers on the basis of age and tenure. Other factors responsible for the reduction in the manpower strength of, of affected entities are death, sicknesses, and the opportunity on the part of officers to travel abroad. They will also interest you to note that as a result of the shortage of empire within the security sector, our people, in most instances, are victims of adequate security protection. For example, predicated on the need for rapid response by security actors to unfavorable security situations that were developing in Bom, Lufa, and Nima County, especially in Nima County, a regional hub was set up in Banga, which was intended to be replicated in other regions of Liberia. The hub was organized to the effect that it will host officers from both the Liberian National Police and the Liberian Immigration, respectively, in conjunction with other rule of law actors from the Ministry of Justice. As we speak, unfortunately, though, that hub has been largely rejected by the officers who are supposed to be stationed there. There is no this is so because the officers themselves have been rejected by the authority who have failed to provide the adequate feeding and logistics for them. In addition thereto, the physical structure of the hub is a large nearly urine and neglected as a result of lack of funding. It is also evident that security presence across the abroad is scarce. And this condition can only be cured when central government provides the requisite funding to national security institutions. Such funding, if and when available, will be directed primarily toward recruitment and training of additional men to buttress the manpower strength of the security sector and the security institution they have. Mr. President, in your rather mesmerizing posture during the delivery of your sonar, you proudly stated, and I quote, my stance in ensuring the rights and protection of all cannot be overemphasized. Mr. President, as a he for she champion, I remain, I remain committed to the dignity of all holding human rights and safeguarding our most valuable population, our women, girls, and children. Unquote. On closer examination, there was only another half sounding rhetoric intended to cause your unsuspecting audience a certain inflicted mental agony when they are no longer under the sound of your voice. How do you explain the incessant report of rape cases with no guarantee of the victim being self justice? Mr. President, read in your foreign ministry in Abuja, the daughter of a senior staff of the mission was raped. And although the ambassador and your minister of foreign affairs are in full knowledge of the incident, it's been several months now, and the case remains a fiasco. Not until the father of the little girl began to raise alarm on international wire did your government begin to show concern. Is that an evidence that you are here for she? Even so, 
the ambassador who had tried cautiously to cover up this incident is still serving the post. Where is the concern for the protection of human rights, especially the rights of our girls? May we also ask you, Mr. President, what has become of the case involving the death of four auditors in less than two weeks? Where is the justice system? What about the case of the three young men who got missing at the Simone Figure home? Are those deaths not of serious human rights concern? Indeed, the observance of the rule of law is a guarantee for increased international cooperation, including attracting investors and investment in the country. Yes, we are an independent, sovereign nation and must do for ourselves what others will not do. We must remember, however, that as a matter of global community, as a member of the global community, our actions are checked by others. Equally so, we check others' actions as well. In a, summary, in, in a summary of statement, you stated in your State of the Nation address, the State of the Nation is peaceful and strong. Unfortunately, this is not the case. The mere absence of the sound of gun fire does not mean peace. Even as you as you are preparing, as you were preparing for the delivery of the sonar on Monday, there was already huge pressure of armed security officers posted at major street corners. Why? Because we are living in a negative peace on account of the miscarriage of justice in the land. What is what is it about an election case involving an individual truly elected by his people that cannot end? Why are the people of local country being marginalized? Why are they being denied proper representation? Why is justice being becoming unattainable? Why are the people not being accorded justice in our court? Are you seeing the state of the nation is peaceful and strong? That it has taken almost 14 months. A case involving a senator elect of the county cannot be resolved by our court system. Mr. President, the Liberty Party recognizes and appreciates some of the efforts of the government to continue with projects that you inherited from the previous administration. And certainly, new ones that your government initiated will note the opening of the community radio, the community rules, and other infrastructure development drive. May we remind you, however, that Labro was brought into a long period of civil conflict not because we were lacking in infrastructure development. There was no, there was a time in this country when LEC power came on by 7 p.m. in most part of the country. And the children studied their lessons on bright lights. We have paved, we have paved roads. They will probably hire now. There were zinc shot that contain TV set. People fish water from running pipes. Yet, we enter the theater of conflict. Why? Because of bad governance, abuse of human rights lack of rule of law, etc., etc. So why is it true that all of those social services were available? Librarians still enter conflict due to bad governance. People human rights were being violated. People were being killed and nothing came out of it. It is therefore a paramount concern to most librarians and even more to our international partner that the rule of law is the foundation that guarantees increased opportunity and stability for any nation and its people. Therefore, Mr. President, please uphold the rule of law to a true meaning. In a prophetic war, the late founding father of the Liberty Party, Councillor Charles Walker Bronski, once said, when the officials of government are unable or fail to let the president know when he or she is wrong, and friends have caused the president to be that he or she is indispensable to our body politics, the president conceived invisibility and the constitutional foundation of the nation once again comes under attack. Then, although opposition politicians may not be physically exiled, every librarian who honors the rule of law and not just opposition politicians become exiled within the border of his or own country. Unquote. This government is taking everything from our people, food, business, the ability to earn a living, no access to affordable health care or education, but we will not allow them to take our dignity away from us. Librarians deserve it. Let us instead remain, remind ourselves 
who we are really. We are a people who declared the first black republic in Africa. Its shortcoming notwithstanding, we serve as a beacon of hope for black all over the world, particularly those in the United States of America who were still laboring under the yoke of slavery. We are a people who started the process of dismantling the evil system of apartheid in South Africa. When Labrador, along with the Empire of Ethiopia, instituted legal actions against the South Africa regime, the tax data of our forefathers were used to support the struggle for the African National Congress, ANC, and the Southwest African People Organization, SWAPO, or what is now known to the Namibia. In San Diego, in country, our nation gave birth to what is known today as the African Union, formerly the Organization of African Unity. And we are a founding member of the United Nations Headquarters. We are a great and a proud people. And it is that spirit of greatness that our nation will rise again. But we cannot do so with lies and false promises of its administration. We will rise on our ability to choose a better option in 2022. We will rise on the resilience attitude that this administration will not take away our dignity. We may draw courage from Victor Franklin, a male who was stripped of all his athletic belongings, when sent to a concentration camp during the World War II. Victor lost his name to prisoner number 119104. His family and everything of value. He survived the camp and later wrote, everything can be taken from a man for wanting the last of the human freedom to choose one attitude in any given set of circumstances. To choose one own way. That is the challenge the Liberty Party set before you today, fellow librarian. Despite the poor leadership of this government and all that it has taken away from the from the average librarian, I challenge the Liberty Party challenge you to choose the right attitude and make sure that come 2020 you choose your way power and be prepared for a Liberty Party leadership working along with caution man and librarian who are willing to set the path for a better library. May the God bless the people and save the republic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. There will be, there will be no question, no answer. We'd just like to say thanks to our friends in the media for coming. I know it's a busy day for you. You've got to be between the session and year. And uh, we'd always like to say thank you for honoring our invitation on a very short notice. Thank you.